There's new excitement around urban air mobility. It's become increasingly interesting to study all aspects, including the technologies, the vehicles, the networks over which they operate. And so it's an interesting opportunity, but there are many hurdles to overcome. We are talking about new uh, urban mobility systems. And it is about us as a society to take the proactive responsibility to shape this future all together. So it's about co-designing, co-shaping the future between all the different uh, stakeholders, including the society itself. When we think about urban air mobility, that's really giving us the, the ability to reduce time, to reduce distance, and really focus on giving ourselves a hyper-connected lifestyle. Instead of sitting in traffic for, say, 90 minutes, you can do that same trip in, say, six minutes. And that's really what urban air mobility is going after, is the value of time. It's not just about the modern convenience, but about improving and or saving lives. You're seeing a lot of medical transport, blood transport, organ transport. These operations are going to start pushing the government to do something to make it an everyday occurrence. The main challenge and roadblock is how can we develop policies and, and frame regulations in a way that will foster and enable innovation. Regulations have direct impact on the cost of these operations and the cost of the operation have a direct impact on the feasibility of the operation. So the wrong regulation can actually kill the entire industry on the one end or could create so many accidents that can kill it on the other side because it's completely unacceptable. So you have a bit of a chicken and egg situation here. If they don't fly, they don't become acceptable, but if they're not acceptable, they don't fly. So somehow you need to break this cycle, otherwise we are stalling. The question would be to find the right balance between what can we regulate at local level, at state level, and what has to be maintained at federal level to avoid this fragmentation of the airspace in a way that which will make it inefficient. The regulations, especially in the United States, are not really at a point where the market can be successful. So you see this big uh, push and pull between industry and regulatory bodies. One of the biggest challenges with operating drones in a city is the obstacles of a city. So if we want to get to the point where we're flying drones truly autonomously, they would have to have information about what obstacles are there. Collection of that data will become an obstacle toward flying drones in a city. If private companies are going to be working on our roadways or our airways, they need to be able to share that data with governance in order for government to make better planning decisions that would improve these services. This data amounts to a public good because it allows us to make these decisions, it allows us to create better infrastructure, yet the government doesn't have access it to make those kinds of decisions or even academics it's often hard to get access to it i think each city will handle urban air mobility in a completely different way and it'll impact the city and the users in a completely different way when we look at a city like boston it will have to be integrated into existing infrastructural systems and that doesn't just mean highways and roadways it also means waterways it also means existing um, parking garages and existing buildings and making sure that we identify the correct locations for these skyports to exist in one of the themes in our work is about rethinking the way that a tower might perform in the city the UAM proposition is very exciting for us as architects and urban designers. We see great opportunity in integrating things like drone ports or new methods of, of getting from, for instance, the airport to your destination in a really expedient way. And how this impacts the city, I think the locations of these transport hubs are going to create hot spots, they're going to create attractors, they might create value propositions to new places in the city that are currently maybe less desirable. The way that we started to design these skyports was with the, the human and the person in mind from the beginning. How are these people going to use these skyports? What are the touch points that they have to go through? And making sure that these skyports give back to the communities and give back to the character and the culture of the neighborhoods in which they're inserted. We would definitely need the community and the neighborhood input into the design of these facilities because the last thing that we want to do is harm communities. 
These spaces are really vital because what we're doing is raising the Skyport and bridging highways that have created divides in our cities. And we're allowing neighborhoods and communities to transverse those highways in a way that they've never been able to do before.